All right, so you saw me just playing with that TBI or setting up that TBI on that Holden Red motor. This is a TBI 48-45 that we typically would use on the O3, uh, sorry, the O360 aircraft engine. In recent times, we've been getting a lot of interest for automotive use. In fact, I sold another one to a gentleman recently, an Australian customer who's putting it on a six-cylinder Holden engine with um, mild performance. But anyway, so this is the exact TBI that I just ran. Um, as you can see how it basically works, you've got your throttle control there. As I said, it's a sliding action like a guillotine. And you can see you've got your spray bar there, the brass tube, quarter inch tube. And that's got 50 tiny 10,000 jets drilled along it in, the, in a progressive pattern. And you change the mixture by rotating the, the whole spray bar 90 degrees through to zero to 90 degrees. When the holes are facing the airstream, it's full lean, and when they're at 90 degrees, it's full rich, and any, anywhere in between is your mixture. And all of this is controlled via a diaphragm, which uh, takes signal off the engine. It's all mechanical, there's no electronics, and it actually runs on quite low fuel pressure. In fact, it'll run on gravity feed if you've got enough uh, flow from your gravity fed system, but typically we would run a uh, a uh, low pressure carburetor type fuel pump either off the engine or electric or a bit of both um, so that's basically it and then on the side here what you've got here is this little screw here this is really the only setup on the whole unit now we run them on that red motor that car engine just to get them in the ballpark we're really you're just there to set up the, uh, the idle mixture which is that screw right there so you can see it's got like um, a little uh, it's placarded there so when you rotate it Clockwise, it's lean, and when you rotate it outwards, it's uh, it's richening up. So that screw there is just for setting your idle mixture. That's a separate idle jet that's not a part of the spray bar. A lot of people contact me and says, oh, Paul, when I go to full lean, uh, it doesn't lean cut, um, idle cut. Well, there is no idle cut up on these. So if you go to idle, a separate 2 millimeter jet, which you might be able to see just in there, um, is uh, not attached to the spray bar so when you close the spray bar off and you go full in on the spray bar um, it's not going to stop it from idling because it's still going to continue to idle on this little idle jet here which is separate 
even though the idle jet is separate, it still adds to the overall fuel. So the idle jet is still in play when you're at full throttle or, or any throttle. But when you close the throttle and you full lean the spray bar, um, yeah, that idle jet will continue to run. So if you want to lean cut, which I don't know why you would need to, but if you decide you must lean cut, well, then you would go to full lean on the mixture control, which is here, and then you would open the throttle to the idle jet can't sustain the power it takes to keep the engine running because it's only a small little jet, just offering enough fuel for a nice smooth idle. And to adjust your idle, you just, as I said, it's a combination of adjusting that screw either inwards or outwards to get the right amount of fuel. And then you would use this throttle stop right here. You see it's got a lock nut there and a jam nut, and you use that to set the throttle gap. And I've got this one set up at about 900 RPM. Now the customer, when he gets the TBI, will be able to tune that or adjust that speed there and maybe even give the idle mixture a little bit of a tweak. But the reason we run them is uh, on, the, on the engine, the test engine, is to just to make sure that there's no glaring faults in the assembly and we have made a mistake and basically to set up the idle mixture and speed so it's in the ballpark when the customer gets it and quite often they don't don't really even need to touch it but they may need to so there you go that's and this button on the side here when you depress that you see it's got a conical spring there it's spring loaded when you depress that button you you're basically overriding the diaphragm and uh, allowing fuel to flow unmetered and you, you can use that in an emergency if you have a fuel starvation or <clears throat> some anomaly, you can use that to manually inject fuel into the spray bar. You may have to manually you know, massage it or regulate it. As I said, you can mechanise that from the cockpit uh, for an aircraft use. It would be a good idea. Um, and when, as I said, when that button's depressed, it basically takes the metering out of play and overrides the flow valve, which allows fuel to enter the TBI unmetered and unregulated. As soon as you let go of that, you're back on the diaphragm controlling the the flow valve, which meters the fuel. Uh, you've got an AN6 fitting here, which has got a last chance filter on the inside. There's a gauze behind that. We would expect you to clean that every, every year, annually, just to make sure there's no crap in there. If there is crap in there, you really need to look at your uh, inline filtration because there should be nothing in there. That's what we call our last chance filter, and it's just uh, when you take that fitting out, it's behind there. Uh, this fuel fitting, by the way, can be swapped with this plug either side because there's just a cross fuel chamber that goes across there. It's the same fitting, same same thread. And on this side, we've got a plug here with a 1-inch MPT fitting in there, and that's plugged off. And the reason we've got that there is if customers want to install a return line, a restricted return line, they can. And the reason you might consider running a restricted return line is to any air bubbles or vapor lock that might occur through a hot situation. Excessively hot temperatures can cause a vapor lock. And by running a return line, it takes that problem away, eliminates it. Now, you don't have to run a return line, but the uh, Rolls-Royce installation would have the return line because then you've got everything going for you. And with the return line fitted, getting vapor lock is basically impossible. But it does add it a complication. You've got to run an extra line back to your header tank or your fuel tank. Um, but it's not that big a deal. So there you go. There's the TBI. TBI 48-45. Typically used on the O320. Uh, sorry, the O360. And uh, we've been building these for many a year. This is the Mark II, which has now got the, the regulator built in there, you see. Whereas that previously was a separate device. Now it's all integral. Alrighty, take it easy, bye for now.